Okay, so we're going to open it up to the floor because um, we're just a small little group at this stage. So um, anybody who would like to comment or question uh, Miranda or ask for guidance from her. I would just want to mention if there is any question that I can't answer, please feel free because all my knowledge comes from Leslie. So um, she will also support in, <laughs> in answering the questions. Very good tactic, Marinda. Pass the hard <laughs> questions on to Leslie. Well done. <laughs> Hello, guys. So this is Carol. I just wanted to say thanks, Marinda. So interesting to hear about that work and so amazing to think of the researcher being 74 years old and still so invested and doing research. It's exciting and inspiring. Thanks. Yeah, no, it was. And you actually said that the uh, perspective change, and that is why I mentioned that specifically that Elsa's whole perspective changed when she really got involved in a community and um, did something worthwhile with her study. Um, yes, Jack. Yeah, um, Maurice put uh, your uh, living poster into the chat. Mm -hmm. And I, I see that you're the project leader for the African Collaboration yeah. Project. And yes. I was just curious uh, whether that sense of Ubuntu, which is written into the African, you know, the South African constitution, mm -hmm. um, yeah. how, does that come into your own values base, you know, as a kind of a, an Ubuntu way of being and living? Do you explicitly address that, you know, within your research? Um, yeah, Jack, we, I must actually say, I can't do community-based research in South Africa specifically and in, in the Africa context also, if I don't adhere to the principles of Ubuntu, because um, that states that we are, we are here because you, I am here because of you and you are here because of me. So that is actually one of the seven principles of Polar that we need to, to grow from one another. Knowledge and skills and input and living theories and everything makes us actually who we are, who we become by um, you know, taking positive aspects from each other. So yes, that will be for surely implemented. And all my students, that is some of the, the uh, philosophies that we, um, we, we, we engage when we have, um, in, in our ontology, we have to adhere to the principles of Ubuntu in Africa. Although, like Leslie said, it's not always, um, you know, happening, but we try to, to make it happen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, right. Um, um, Carol, I can also just say if she's still here, um, she spoke in the breakaway room about the, that we need to be invited. Um, that is very true. It's also, I would say, in the in the African perspective or in South Africa, that uh, we can't, cannot just barge in, although we see sometimes with our theoretical knowledge and um, that there can be a, a lack of a knowledge gap. In, in a specific area, but we have to be very cautious and therefore we make use of gatekeepers um, and we actually inform them about our research and what do we intend doing and then they actually go in, not the researcher. The gatekeeper goes into that area and asks um, if they would like some advice or um, uh, support in a certain sense. And uh, from the, the research that I have done so far, no school, no community has ever turned us away um, because they really want the help. There's, there's a huge need of, of knowledge um, in, in the rural areas specifically, because one of the projects that I'm also involved is, and like Leslie said, I'm in early childhood, and that is in, a, in three different schools in a rural, rural areas in, in uh, close to uh, Potchefstroom, and where we support um, ECCE practitioners in um, holistic development of the little ones and they, we have great success and also one of that teaches the principles um, of one of those schools enrolled in a great art program she's so she's one of my students also so that is like they say here in Potchefstroom growing your own timber so that with community engagement projects that really is taking place and rubbing off. Right. This is inspirational. Yeah, and Leslie has her hand up as well too. So 
Maybe we go with Leslie first, if that's okay, Jackie, because she's waiting. Quickly, patiently. that question of um, who, who wants to do the research, um, that's always something that's difficult because our systems say you should do your proposal first and, and what. So we have just won. Very, very luckily, our NRF has partnered with the Department of Science and Innovation and South African so Agency for the Advancement of Science. There's about three different agencies involved. And we've actually won a grant using the, the project on um, and youth unemployment to, um, to create a science shop. They want all universities to create a science shop, which will mean that it's a place where communities or industry or whoever can come and say, we have an, an issue we want to help with. And so I think that will go a long way to, to, to um, you know, stopping us just going in and saying, we've got an idea and you want to do it. And that, and that is, I'm leading that project, but it's centrally situated in the, in the directed community impact and sustainability um, so that we can involve all faculties. And that's just a kickoff project. Um, it, it is going to be a place where people can come. There are science shops all over Europe. I, I'm sure you're aware of them, but this is the first time that we've had them in South Africa. And there was only six universities chosen to be funded this time um, because only six of them adhere to the principles of participant CBR. So it shows you how much capacity building still has to be done. Just thought I'd mention that. That's great. Thank you. Um, okay, Jackie, you wanted to comment? Um, one of the my positions is that in order to hear the voices of the people in the field, they need to be writing their own stories, doing their own research, and getting their own knowledge out there as opposed to our knowledge. And um, I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to denigrate in any way what wonderful work is going on here, Miranda. Absolutely wonderful work. But I'm not talking about academic work. I'm talking about professional development narratives of the people in the fields, in the schools, in the rural areas, the parents and the teachers and the students. If we could get more of those stories out, I think we, we could have more of this transformation that we're looking for, more Ubuntu, so that it's not us speaking, but them speaking with their own agency, their own voices. And it will it be wonderful academic work? Who cares? Okay, this, this is good. There is a good food for thought there, Jackie. Mm, definitely. Um, and Marie, we're nearly out of time now, but if you'd like to make your comment. Yeah, well, just for a quick one, um, because you made me realise in our small groups, the importance of the language. And I was just struck by Marinda when you talked about gatekeepers, keepers are to keep people out. And it sounds like you're more got gate facilitators or gate openers. And I was mm. just wondering whether um, the gate openers might actually research what it is that they are doing to open rather than close gates. I was just wondering whether they act as facilitators or simply to stop you from going into things that you otherwise no, might. I, uh, Mary, I think they are actually opening the gates for us to go in, but this is just a terminology in the ethics. Um, so I, I assume we can think of a better word uh, if that can be confusing, but this is just a word that we, yeah, it, like I said, we, it comes from the ethics department and that is the work that we use. But I, I suppose that we can actually say, you know, explain it better that the, the gatekeepers are actually keeping, um, yeah, actually keeping um, tack with all the, the ethical um, aspects and then when everything is in place then they will open the gate but thank you for that input that's wonderful Marinda thank you so much for such a fabulous yeah. input this morning so thank much you. for you know just stirring up so many thoughts and questions in all our own in all our mm -hmm. own thinking um well done we really really appreciate this and hopefully our conversation we're always trying to have the learning conference that Super Scourish talks about, you know, that our conversations will continue after the event. So that's why we try to, you know, collect up thoughts and, you know, add to them afterwards. Thank you so much. That was just inspirational.